Welcome to Bite Size Data Science. We continue our time series exploration with the same COVID-19 time series as in video 84. Let's explore how we can get a better idea on trends and complete our analysis with seasonality and predictions. Let's get into a notebook. I am using the IBM Watson Studio environment to run my notebook. If you are interested, you can find a link in the description on how to create a free account on that platform. Links to the notebook I'm using here are also available in the description. We start with retrieving our data through the Socrata API, but this time we only get the data since March 1, 2021, and, as in video 84, we are limiting ourselves to six attributes. After reading the records, we convert the columns to their proper types. We also sort them chronologically by submission date. As our first task, we graph the daily cases from a few states and compare them to the national average. Since the cases have been decreasing, the graphs have a smaller range of values in the y-axis, making the graphs easier to read than when we use the entire dataset. We see that Arizona seems to be pretty static while the national average is decreasing. California stays consistently below the national average, Michigan has made great progress in reducing their cases, and Oregon has been improving recently, but could do better. One other thing we can notice on all the states is that the data can vary a lot from day to day. To get a better idea of the trend, we can use a rolling average. This is what we always hear about on the news. Let's take the Oregon data and see the difference between the raw data and the 7-day rolling average. A rolling average takes the last x readings and averages them. In our case, we are talking about the last 7 readings. The result is that the values are more stable from day to day, as we can see on the graph. It is easier to see if the number of cases are increasing or decreasing. There are multiple ways to calculate a rolling average. For one, we don't have to use the last x readings from where we are. We could use our current location as the middle point, for example. Other ways include assigning less weight to older readings. Here is an example of using the exponential weighing average. We can see that it is a little more volatile than the 7-day moving average. Let's see how a graph of states comparison looks like when using a 7-day moving average. This makes it a lot easier to read than when we use the noise of daily variations. Up to this point, we have been doing historical analysis. The assumption is that the past is an indication of the future. If we see a downward trend in the past, we can assume that we are doing better. Could we instead try to predict the next value, for example? There are multiple methods available to predict the next few readings. They are based on autoregression and moving averages, or a combination of both. This is where we see the ARMA and ARIMA methods. The choice between ARMA and ARIMA depends on if the time series is stationary or not. Here we use the add fuller method to see if the time series is stationary. There are other ways to evaluate if a time series is stationary, but we won't explore them here. A simple way to make a time series stationary is by using the differences between sequential values instead of the value themselves. The classic methods to predict future values are autoregression, or AR, or moving average, MA. We can combine these methods together and use the ARMA method. In our case, we identify that our time series is not stationary. We can still use these methods, but we use an additional step that makes it stationary. The method is called ARIMA, or Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average. There are also other variations available, such as SARIMA model, that also take into consideration seasonality. To obtain an ARIMA model, we need to take additional analysis steps to figure out how many previous values should be used to predict the new one. These steps have to be taken for both the autoregression part and the moving average part. This is where ACF, or autocorrelation function, and PACF, or partial autocorrelation function, come in. In the description of this video, I added several links to other videos that can give you more details on ACF, PACF, and ARIMA. In here, instead of trying to figure out those values, we use the AutoArima function that saves us all this trouble. The result is a Sarima model that includes seasonality. It is using five previous values for autoregression, 
one step of integration for stationarity, and two previous values for moving average. It's a lot easier than iterating through a bunch of steps to figure out these optimal values. There is more that can be done to predict future values, including using multiple rolling averages. There are more recent approaches that take advantage of machine learning and AI. Time series are everywhere. A good understanding on how to use them can be very useful. See you next time on Bite Size Data Science, and don't forget to subscribe.